The flow of migrants across the Mediterranean is nothing new. It is a persistent, often obscured reality that's been further complicated by the pandemic. Tensions have risen as European countries try to halt the flow or shrug off a real commitment to at-sea rescues. Between 2000 and 2017, more than 30,000 people have perished in the Mediterranean Sea, but the European Union has maintained a policy of externalizing responsibilities, investing heavily in the Libyan Coast Guard to take action in their waters. Humanitarian organizations have attempted to fill the gap, but countries like Italy began to directly oppose their efforts by detaining ships and even accusing them of collusion with smugglers. But the flow continues. Last fall, I followed a tip to explore luxury cruise liners chartered by the Italian government for the purpose of detaining recently arrived migrants seeking asylum in Europe. With on-land reception centers at capacity, Italy decided to quarantine migrants rescued at sea aboard cruise ships costing roughly a million euros a month. I had originally met Francesco Toscaelli through his collaboration with the Outlaw Ocean Music Project. The 29-year-old pianist told me he was doing a tour volunteering with the Red Cross, which staffs the cruise ships, and I wanted to investigate the circumstances of this quarantine. No journalist had been permitted by the Italian government to visit any of the giant floating holding pens where thousands of migrants, mostly from the Middle East and Africa, were being held. So I applied to the Red Cross to work as a volunteer. Cruise ships have an architecture of deliberate disorientation, like shopping malls and casinos. Exits are harder to find, and there are few clocks or windows to measure the passing of time. They are designed to feel as though you're not at sea, but rather in a five-star Las Vegas hotel. Everything's shiny, sprawling, and inward-facing. There is an inescapable irony to Italy's justified use of these floating quarantines during the pandemic when one of the first serious COVID outbreaks occurred on a cruise ship. Ventilation systems aboard cruise ships rely on recirculated air that can spread airborne particles far faster than, say, on airplanes. On La Suprema, many areas felt denser because all passengers were confined to designated floors and sections of the ship. In April of last year, Italy announced they were no longer safe harbors for migrants. Malta followed suit the next day, and before long, much of the EU was using the virus to justify tighter borders. But it's unclear to me how effective these policies are in actually discouraging migrants left with no choice but to flee conditions like war, extortion, and forced labor. While volunteering, Francesco convinced the ship's captain to let him hold recitals for the passengers. An oppressive sense of purgatory was momentarily dissolved around his piano as he played during outside recess and in narrow hallways and in the COVID positive ward. people migrants we used to call in Italian clandestino but when you are in front of one person you hear his story sometimes he is walking from five years you realize the world is too much little to contain all the story of a person it is not enough to say migrant As we returned to shore, the migrants remained at sea to finish their quarantine, a final hurdle before they reached European soil. 
thing. You had Muslims and Christians, and it was just all thrown together. Uh, Tunisians and Bangladeshis and Iraqis and... It's a, as I said to you before, it is a lot, it is a continent that is migrating. So you, you have to be on the boat to, to understand how much is big. The word big is not enough big <laughs> to express, to express it. La Suprema remains in Italian waters. The migrant flow continues. So, for now, does the music. 